All right, what's going on, guys? It is your boy TKD123 here, back in here on PlayStation Source in full camera with a new camera. So, so definitely down below, let me know your thoughts on the brand new camera. You know, what I'm saying I'll, you know, maybe you could talk about it later on in a future video. Um, I want to sit down and you know, kind of do impressions and you know, these kind of like tips and tricks videos a little bit differently this year in terms of my channel. And I kind of just want to sit down and just talk to you guys more, a bit more casually about how I feel about a particular mode and. I have been playing uh, the recently released The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered No Return Roguelike mode uh, that got added to Part 2 Remaster. You can go watch our video on the all info video about that No Return mode specifically, as well as The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered as well. That got its own all info video as well. Difficult to check out those if you want to hear the more nitty gritty about what those modes entail. But long story short, it's a roguelike mode where you know you got to go through multiple waves of different encounters to get to a final boss, and that will complete your run. And you have to beat, I think you have to do the run, I think, six times. And then you beat the game or something like that. Or five times, I forgot for sure. But I wanted to give you guys some tips and tricks about how I have been managing in The Last Was Part 2 No Return. Because uh, it is a pretty difficult mode. I can't lie. It was pretty hard. It's pretty difficult. But I got some things to tell you all that will hopefully make it overall better. So first up here on the tips, make sure to scavenge as much as you can before the encounter ends. And so these different supplies and parts and different materials that you can have for crafting or for upgrades when you go back into the lobby or the like I forgot what's called the, the little like sanctuary lobby type thing we we can say where you're doing your upgrades and stuff like that um, all of those persist like it's not just you pick up a bottle or, or you pick up a rag and it only stays in that encounter instance for crafting it's used across the whole run so you can definitely you know stockpile a lot if you're careful and it could be also very useful if you have some challenges where you need to let's say there was one that I was using with Lev where I have to kill several Seven enemies in a single encounter with explosive arrows so if you were going for that kind of challenge you can really focus on not crafting things that you would need for that craft seven of those explosive arrows and do it in a run later on as you're playing so definitely want to save up on those stock up because you never know when you're gonna need them in the future now next up this is probably one of the most integral things that I learned while playing no return that is the deposit system so as you advance through the whole no return mode you'll have these instances where you're going to be able to see a deposit station where you're going to be able to put a particular item that you craft or that you find in the world and it's something that you might need right like a health kit like you know uh, a pipe bomb etc but if you do that you reap a lot of rewards when you beat that encounter and go back to the lobby like there's a lot of cool stuff there there's exclusive weapons like i've gotten flamethrowers i've gotten upgraded semi-auto rifles like it is very integral that you do that but the problem here is that sometimes you have encounters like hunted where the actual encounter ends and cuts to black as soon as the timer runs out for hunted for example Example, right so you so you're so you're gonna want to be very 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 aware of looking at the deposit box right when the encounter starts or even in the countdown as you know the encounter is starting overall and make sure you know what is required for that deposit box to be able to get those rewards and make sure you are completing that before the encounter ends especially on hunted and what's really cool is that the deposit box is pretty much always live as soon as you spawn in it's not like it activates when the encounter officially starts as the countdown is going down so you can get those done really quickly uh, ahead of time if you're very careful with that so definitely keep in mind those deposit boxes are very important do them because they will give you a lot of rewards that will help you later on in your run now the third one here is something that i still struggle with to this day and like i don't know if this is like an oversight with the mode itself i would love to get some more intel on that but the whole notion of gambits and mods right so gambits and mods basically a gambit is going to be a little challenge that will appear on the top left of your screen that is 
is like, oh, uh, get the enemy, um, you know, in a grab uh, animation and then headshot them, right? Or, uh, you know, kill three enemies with three different weapons, stuff like that. Like, like little challenges that will give you extra materials and extra bonus um, tokens as well to use in the armory back when you get to the lobby. Those are going to be very crucial to also complete along with the deposit boxes as well, right? But there's some times where you will miss out on what the mod is and the mod if you guys don't know is like a special little challenge within that given encounter so it'll be like melee hits um engulf the enemies in flames it'll be other ones like i'm trying to give another mod that i've had oh like raining molotovs and stuff like that or um, enemies will drop a bomb that's live as soon as they're as soon as they dead like marty dom and Malfoy too stuff like that right but what I've been seeing is that while you can check the gambit on a given encounter by going into the crafting menu, you can see the gambit in the top left corner. I'm pretty sure the only two places where you see the mod is when you are picking the encounter on the cork board in the lobby or when you're first loading into the encounter itself. So I have found myself missing out on what the mod is and not knowing how to play this encounter given that. So definitely want to keep in mind that pay attention to the mod. And I haven't even seen a way to check on what the mod is. Like they do have a little logo, but you know, like you might not know what that logo is. Uh, early on and stuff like that so definitely want to make sure that you are taking note and being aware of what the mod is before you go into a given encounter now one here that i think i think should be a no-brainer but just in case you were unaware in the armory when you go back to the lobby in between encounters you can select to purchase a lawn holster or a short rifle holster as well like it extends your inventory to carry more more weapons at once i suggest you get these as soon as humanly possible this will give you more arsenal to play with it'll give you a bigger plethora of weapons to use in a given encounter so you're not running out of ammo per se where you only have two weapons and you you know burn through both their ammo then you're screwed right but it is very important i think these should be your first um upgrades that you do right is get the long rifle holster and the short and the short gun holster to be able to carry as much of an arsenal on you as possible at all times a little quick one here nothing too crazy but i just think it really does help in the overall efficiency of the game mode that you are playing and just overall just is, is going to help a lot having your inventory extended early on and i think the last thing i'll say as well is definitely pay attention to the different characters and what their overall kind of class build is i will be doing a I, I i'm thinking about doing a video let, let me know if you guys want this actually let me know if you guys want to see a full kind of full guide of each individual character and how they play and what their best play style should be and how you should approach and like how you should approach them and stuff like that because they're very diverse like with ellie she is the more well-rounded character she is able to do a lot of things at once kind of like a swiss army knife right as opposed to characters like lev right where lev you know starts out with a bow and arrow and enhanced uh listen mode so she is very much tuned for stealth very much tuned to being quiet being you know subtle being quick on her feet and stuff and stuff like that so very good character as well but those both contrast with a character like tommy where tommy gets a sniper and he is very much really good at long range but what's funny enough with him and joel they can't dodge which definitely does throw me off i don't really like playing them that much yet like i haven't really kind of found my rhythm with those characters that can't dodge because i just find dodging so integral in a lot of these encounters but um they can't dodge but they are kind of sturdier to melee so there are just a lot of different things that are really different about these characters that you're going to want to take advantage of and 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 really know going in that these are not just cosmetics like these characters are really built for for like specific ways of play that could benefit you if you know how to play them so definitely keep in mind guys if you're going for challenges or you just want a successful run definitely know the character that you're playing and i did want to just end this video on just some impressions and thoughts on the mode um i really like it right like i think it's a really fun way to highlight the last of us part two gameplay that we all love so much and to have something that is very repetitive very fun and overall one of the things that i can definitely say about this mode is that it is very very intense
I find myself at the end of encounters doing a big like exhale, like, okay, like I made it, I survived, I'm good, right? And I think, you know, the Last of Us games do that so well, and it's really cool that they were able to translate that here to this no return mode roguelike to get that same kind of feel. I think it's very awesome how they kind of were able to pull that together. Um, I do like how this no return mode does have a nice steady stream of unlocks. And I feel like the game is consistently giving you more and more mods to play with, more and more gamuts to achieve, more and more skins. The way they unlock characters is, is you have to use this character first to unlock this character, then this character first to unlock this character. Like it's a very it's a very organized kind of stair stepping unrolling of content that I think is really nice for the mode overall. Like I've maybe put around I want to say like six or six or eight hours in in into the game. And I haven't unlocked everyone yet just because I've been kind of focusing in on the characters that I like so far But there is a really nice unraveling of different, you know modes that get unlocked as you progress and etc So I think it's a really cool way that they have it organized and I do like the mode overall But I will say I think this mode definitely definitely um, kind of looks not necessarily worse, but it looks a little, uh, compared to God of War, Ragnarok Valhalla. Now, is it fair to make this comparison? One might say yes, because they're both roguelikes. Um, I'm going to just say this very loosely here, but to a certain degree, like, I do miss this, well, not miss, but I would have wanted a ro- So, you know what? Let me just back up. Let me just back up, right? You think about Hades, right? And in Hades, your whole objective is to escape hell, and go against your father, right? That is the premise of Hades, and you're doing these runs for a reason, right? In Valhalla, you are doing those runs for a reason. You are trying to master thyself. You are having to go deeper and deeper, and it is a challenge that Kratos has to overcome himself to be able to reach the end of Valhalla and fully master it, right? Even long after you beat the mode, there's plenty of different lore bits and 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 like story and premise to to keep you going back in, right? While this mode is very fun, right? And I do find myself, you know, wanting to play it and sitting down here and playing it and everything and having a great time. The gameplay of No Return for me is still great, but I do wish it had a carrot on the stick. I think that's what this game mode is missing. Just, just that carrot on the stick to really propel you to keep going in the mode, right? And like, I'm not saying that this mode needed like overall cutscenes or crazy dialogue or lore or whatever, but like, give me at least a reason as to why Ellie is doing this or why Lev is doing this, or why Manny is doing this. You know what I'm saying? Like, like they have like all these characters that I think are really cool, and I think it's just, you know, maybe maybe Naughty Dog just wanted to make a roguelike gameplay focused mode, and that's fine. It's great at that, it's, 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 it's awesome. Like, I really like it, but I can't shake the feeling of like, ah, man, like I would have loved to have had a premise like the original factions, right, where you went out into multiplayer matches to get resources and to get, um, you know, different parts and etc. whatever to bring back to your settlement in the menu and you, you know, lose followers sometimes if you're doing poorly in matches and you have to do a specific challenge to be able to lose less um, people when they come attack and stuff like that. If you all played the original factions, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There was an overall premise to the multiplayer matches as opposed to it just being a gameplay focused mode. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just I just kind of am a little not like not like let down, but I'm a little shocked that there there actually wasn't there. There doesn't seem to be any premise now. I, I could be wrong when I beat this mode, maybe. There might be something in the back end, perhaps, but um, I kind of was, um, I'm definitely on that end. Like, I'm kind of wishing that there was a little bit more premise to the no return mode. But down below, guys, what are your thoughts? If you have any other tips and tricks down below, definitely let us know in that comment section. And um, yeah, overall, I really like it. Expect probably some more content. If you do want to see that full character guide, let me know down below in the comment section if you want to see that. But yeah, thank you all for watching. Make sure to check out our other all info videos about The Last of Us Part 2 and the no return mode. And keep it locked here for the future for future PlayStation content. Thank you all for watching. And as always, greatness awaits.